the original James Bond, a guitar god, the queen of Technicolor, and three Hall of Famers. These are the stories of the lives we lost in October 2020. Bonnie Lou Kern was one of the original Masketeers. She made her debut at the age of 14 on the very first episode of the Mickey Mouse Club in 1955. Her death was announced publicly in October. She died September 28th of natural causes at the age of 79. James Randi was a stage magician known as the Amazing Randi. He made dozens of appearances on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. He was also a skeptic, sponsoring a million dollar prize if anyone could prove they had paranormal abilities. Randy died October 20th at the age of 92. Johnny Nash sang the 1972 number one hit, I Can See Clearly Now. He was one of the first American musicians to bring Jamaican reggae to the Billboard charts. He also had a top 10 R&B hit in 1965 with Let's Move and Groove Together. Nash died October 6th of natural causes at the age of 80. Leanza Cornette was crowned Miss Florida in 1992 and Miss America in 1993. She was the first Miss America to advocate for AIDS awareness. She later became a TV personality, hosting shows like Entertainment Tonight and Who Wants to Marry a Multimillionaire. Cornette died October 28th from a head injury after a fall at the age of 49. Margaret Nolan was an actress and model who appeared covered in gold paint during the iconic title sequence of the James Bond movie Goldfinger. She played Bond's masseuse, Dink, in the film. She also had an uncredited appearance in the Beatles film A Hard Day's Night. Nolan died October 5th of cancer at the age of 76. Thomas Jefferson Bird was an actor known for his work in Spike Lee movies. He was recently featured in Lee's Netflix series, She's Got to Have It. In 2003, he was nominated for a Tony Award for his performance in the Broadway revival of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Bird died October 3rd in a shooting in Atlanta at the age of 70. Viola Smith was billed in the 1930s and 40s as the fastest girl drummer in the world. During World War II, she called for women musicians to have more professional opportunities while men were away fighting. In the 1960s, she was the drummer for the Kit Kat Band in the Broadway musical Cabaret. Smith died October 21st of complications from Alzheimer's disease at the age of 107. Jerry Jeff Walker was a singer and songwriter who penned the song Mr. Bojangles. It was based on a man he met in a New Orleans jail cell. The song was a hit for the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band in 1971, before Sammy Davis Jr. made it a staple of his stage shows. Walker died October 23rd of throat cancer at the age of 78. Johnny Bush was a country singer who wrote the popular song Whiskey River. It became a signature number for his friend Willie Nelson. Bush had a string of hits himself and was nicknamed the Caruso of Country for his distinctive tenor voice. He died October 16th of complications from pneumonia at the age of 85. Singer-songwriter Billy Joe Shaver was an authentic country outlaw poet who taught himself to play guitar after losing two fingers in a sawmill accident. His songs from Honky Tonk Heroes to Hard to Be an Outlaw were made famous by Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, and Elvis Presley. Shaver died October 28th of a stroke at the age of 81. Rhonda Fleming was a movie star of the 1940s and 50s, dubbed the queen of Technicolor for her flaming red hair and sparkling green eyes. At 17, she was signed to a contract by movie mogul David O. Selznick. She appeared in Alfred Hitchcock's Spellbound and shared the screen with stars like Kirk Douglas, Burt Lancaster, and Ronald Reagan. Fleming died October 14th at the age of 97. Tom Kennedy hosted popular TV game shows such as Name That Tune, You Don't Say, and Split Second. As an actor, he made guest appearances on That Girl and Hardcastle and McCormick. Kennedy died October 7th at the age of 93. Whitey Ford was the legendary left-hander who pitched the New York Yankees to six World Series titles. Edward Charles Whitey Ford, a 
the man who won more games for the New York Yankees than any other pitcher in the team's history, announces his retirement at Yankee Stadium and says goodbye to the fans. He was a 10-time All-Star, a Cy Young Award winner, and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1973. Ford died October 8th at the age of 91. Bob Gibson was an intimidating presence on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals of the 1960s. He led the team to World Series titles in 1964 and 1967. The first series game at Boston went to St. Louis, 2-1, to one, with Bob Gibson getting the win. He was National League MVP in 1968, posting a minuscule 1.12 earned run average. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1981. Gibson died October 2nd of pancreatic cancer at the age of 84. Joe Morgan was one of the greatest second basemen in the history of Major League Baseball. He was a major cog in the Cincinnati Reds' Big Red Machine championship teams. They were the World Series champions in 1975 and 1976, and Morgan was named league MVP both years. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1990 and worked as a baseball analyst on TV. Morgan died October 11th at the age of 77. Roberta McCain was the mother of the late Senator John McCain. In 2008, at the age of 96, she hit the presidential campaign trail on behalf of her son. An oil heiress and the wife of a four-star Navy admiral, she was known for speaking her mind to her family and to the media. McCain died October 12th at the age of 108. Val Archer was one of the last surviving Tuskegee Airmen, the elite group of black pilots and support staff who served during World War II. He joined the U.S. Army at 18 and trained as an airplane mechanic and instrument specialist. He served in the U.S. Air Force during the Korean War and Vietnam War, becoming a crew chief and later an instructor for intercontinental ballistic missile squadrons. Archer died October 4th at the age of 91. Reginald Brewster was also a Tuskegee Airman. He served during World War II in England and France as secretary to the base commander. After the war, he studied law at Fordham and practiced civil law until his retirement at 90. Brewster died October 26th at the age of 103. Marge Champion was a dancer and actress who served as a model for the animators of Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. She also modeled for the Blue Fairy in Pinocchio and Hyacinth Hippo in Fantasia. She appeared in several live action films, often with her husband, Broadway director and dancer Gower Champion. She was honored with a Disney Legends Award in 2007. Champion died October 21st at the age of 101. James Redford was a filmmaker and the son of movie star Robert Redford. His experience as the recipient of an organ transplant inspired his first documentary, The Kindness of Strangers. Other topics he covered included dyslexia, toxic chemicals in furniture, and environmental issues. Redford died October 16th of bile duct cancer at the age of 58. Spencer Davis was the guitarist for British rock band The Spencer Davis Group. Fronted by teenage lead singer Steve Winwood, they had a string of hits during the 1960s, including Gimme Some Lovin' and I'm a Man. The songs are bigger than, you know, than the members of the band, you know, the guys, the, the, those of us that wrote the songs. Never expected the thing to still be played in 2008, but hey, I'm very grateful. Davis died October 19th of pneumonia at the age of 81. Matt Blair was a six-time Pro Bowl linebacker for the Minnesota Vikings. He played in two Super Bowls during his 12 seasons in the NFL. After football, he had a career as a wildlife and landscape photographer. Blair died October 22nd at the age of 70. Fred Dean was a Hall of Fame defensive end who played for the San Diego Chargers and San Francisco 49ers, winning two Super Bowls with the latter. In 1983, he set a record of six sacks in one game against the New Orleans Saints. Dean died October 14th of complications from COVID-19 at the age of 68. Herb Adderley was a cornerback for the 1960s Green Bay Packers. He was the only NFL player to appear in four of the first six Super Bowls, the first two with Green Bay and then two more with the Dallas Cowboys. 
the five-time Pro Bowler was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1980. Adderley died October 30th at the age of 81. Conchata Farrell was an actress best known for her Emmy-nominated performance as the wisecracking housekeeper Berta on the sitcom Two and a Half Men. She was also acclaimed for her work on the drama L.A. Law. The West Virginia-born actress had a long career as a character actor, appearing in movies like Network, Edward Scissorhands, and Aaron Brockovich. Farrell died October 12th of complications following cardiac arrest at the age of 77. Eddie Van Halen was one of the greatest rock guitarists of all time. He popularized a technique he called tapping, inspiring a generation of would-be rockers to pick up the guitar and learn to shred. His band, Van Halen, had a string of multi-platinum albums from the late 70s to the 90s, powered by hard rock hits like Runnin' with the Devil, Panama, and Hot for Teacher. He even found time to lay down the iconic guitar riff in Michael Jackson's hit, Beat It. Van Halen died October 6th of throat cancer at the age of 65. Sean Connery was the Scottish actor who brought super spy James Bond to life on the big screen. He and the character were catapulted to the stratosphere of global fame during the 1960s, and he would play Bond in a total of seven films over the years. Well, um, I don't know why they never gave me an Oscar for James Bond. <laughs> You would have to ask them, whoever they are. Connery did win an Oscar for 1987's The Untouchables, and he went on to play more larger-than-life characters in films like The Hunt for Red October and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. His death was reported October 31st after he died in his sleep at the age of 90.